welcome to the We Talk Health podcast, the official podcast for West Tennessee Healthcare. Please be advised that this podcast is not intended to replace any medical advice. Always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing said in this podcast is intended to supersede or supplement the direction of your medical caretakers. If you have any questions, please reach out to us at wetalkhealthpodcast at gmail.com and we will do our best to answer any questions you may have. Welcome to another episode of We Talk Health. My name is Will Cashagro, and today I am joined by Kathy Sudbury, Travis Livingston, and Sabrina Clark. They are all associated with Sports Plus, uh, different entities of Sports Plus here in Jackson and surrounding counties. How are y'all today? Doing good. Doing well. Thanks for coming in. So we're going to be talking about kind of navigating the Sports Plus athletic trainer life during COVID. Obviously, COVID has shook the world. We don't need to say that more than once because everyone has heard it a a ton by this point, but you guys work directly with students and most schools haven't been meeting regularly. So, so Travis, what school are you at and how's it affected you guys? I'm with uh, Jackson State Community College. Okay. You know, we, we've been virtual since we started back and, you know, outside of specialized program or PTA, uh, OTA nursing programs are on campus, but none of those, you know, I don't have interaction with them. They don't play they're they're not athletes but you know for us it's it's been it's been a whirlwind things change weekly temp check questionnaires with healthy roster every day just really navigating if they're sick they don't come at all it's just been a very difficult ever-changing world Mm -hmm. i can imagine it's even been more like exhausting in a way because because it is so changing yeah mentally mentally it's very exhausting physically not as bad Mm -hmm. but mentally yeah it's it can be very draining. Yeah, for sure. Travis, when you mentioned Healthy Roster, could you go into details? What does that mean? So Healthy Roster is a program we brought on to campus this year. And I think primarily before it was used as more of like an injury tracking software. That way you can communicate with coaches. But they wrote into their program a questionnaire for the athletes every day that is automated. And it's texted out every morning at our school at 6 a.m. Mm-hmm. And Basically, they have to answer a few questions. Have they been around anyone that's been, you know, the last two two to 14 days? Have they had a fever? And then they've got a list of symptoms they have to check. If they say yes to any of those or check any symptom, it sends, you know, it marks them, it red flags them, and sends straight to healthy roster a notification. And Mm -hmm. then at that point, I call them, check with them, and then determine whether or not it's safe for them to come on campus or do we need to go see a doctor and just get them checked. Yeah. What does it look like for you, Sabrina? And what school are you at? I'm at Dyersburg State. We're following a lot of the same protocols that Jackson State are following, but in the fall, we actually were on campus. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now our students wasn't. Uh, We did have nursing and EMT, uh, and they were on campus taking some classes just because they had a lot of labs and stuff uh, that they had to do. So they did make provisions for those guys and they came on, but everybody else was virtual at that point. Gotcha. Now our athletes were on campus in the fall, so Dyersburg State looked a little bit different than Jackson. We did do the same stuff. We have healthy roster and ours goes out at 7.30 in the morning. Same thing there, but since we were on campus, ours looked a little bit different. And so the questionnaire would go out at 7.30 in the morning. The athletes would have to fill that out before they come to campus. Uh, And when they fill those out, like he said, it asks them if they've been around anybody within the last two to 14 days, and it asks if they're having symptoms. Uh, If so, then they mark that. And COVID is is one thing, it has symptoms, but you've got flu, you've got strep, you've got all the other viruses. So, you know, it, it lists, like, do you have a fever? Do you have a sore throat? There's multiple symptoms there that could be other things. Mm -hmm. And so what Travis was talking about, when we have to call and inquire, you know, they may list Hey, I've got a fever. Well, that could be a multiple thing. So right. if they mark anything on that questionnaire, it goes to Healthy Roster, and then we get a text message and an email. And at that point, on their phone, it'll flag them not to come to campus. Mm-hmm. It'll give them a red screen, and that red screen just says somebody will be you know, contacting you. So we contact them at that point and then determine, you know, number one, is it something where we need to COVID test them? Um, right. And if so, we're doing that on campus now. Uh, we have the rapid test, and, and so – the way it looks when we bring them on campus to do that is 
we have an isolation room set up and that way they don't come into the training room or you know go anywhere on campus where they could be around others there's an outside door that comes into the isolation room mm -hmm. they come in we have them set there when we do a rapid test on them at that point uh, and they wait in that room until results come back how long does it take for those results i know sometimes some rapid tests are 10 minutes some are 30. right we're using the bionex now mm -hmm. and uh, they are 15 minutes okay and so it's a nasal swab and uh, and we have that right there and so We'll do the test on them, see the results that come back, and then determine where to go. You know, positive result, then we have our sports medicine team set up and, and we refer, refer them to the doctor. Gotcha. Um, and then go from there as far as, you know, the recommendations. If it is confirmed that they are positive, then we follow CDC recommendations. Mm. But then if they're not, they'll assess if they have different type of virus or whatever's going on, and, and then that determines. If we do call them and, you know, it's, something where we're thinking sinus or, you know, something that's not too bad, or maybe they've just been exposed, then we treat that differently too. But they're not allowed to come back on campus until their screen turns green. And then on that healthy roster, it's gonna notify the coach, the AD and the athletic trainer. So the coaches are aware when, you know, one of their athletes pops. Now they can't see all the symptoms and stuff like that. They can just see what we're putting in as mm -hmm. far as that injury report. So it's good for tracking our athletes and everything from there. Um, now in the spring, we're we're back on campus with a lot of classes now, mm -hmm. and uh, and we're doing the rapid testing, and we're actually trying to play our sports now. And so, what we've got set up is we're testing all of our athletes, uh, basketball, volleyball, anything that's indoors. They're going to get tested twice a week, and in all of our outdoor sports, they get tested once a week. Gotcha. Um, and then just like setting up with healthy roster, they still have to do that, so they get the questionnaire. 7.30 in the morning, and then we, you know, determine when we're going to do the testing during the week. According to when games are, they have to test at least 48 hours prior to game. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also, you know, go within their tier. So if it's two times a week or one time a week. Gotcha. So it's added quite a bit, you know, as far as, as yeah. what we do in our role. Right. We're still having to take care of the athletes, and we're still having to take care of injuries and, you know, utilize all that too. So. Are you doing that on campus? How did you get, I guess, how did you get involved with doing that? Actually, yeah, we're doing those on campus. And so the way that looks, you know, for our protocols, it, the Junior College Association said that in order for us to play this year that we were going to have to test. And so we kind of got word of that a little bit before Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, about two weeks before Christmas. And so honest enough, I, I didn't know how we was going to pull that off. And I was so, going to have to pay for it all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I a got a big to, undertaking for yeah, sure. I got to calling around and was, you know, just trying to find an urgent care, find a PCP or somebody that, you know, could help us out. And, you know, it, nobody had the number of tests that we were going to need. And so uh, looking at, at just Dyersburg, I've got 140 athletes. And they were looking at testing basketball twice a week and testing everybody else once a week. So we were looking somewhere around 180 to 200 tests that we were going to need weekly. So I got to calling around was, you know, we was trying to figure that out. And we were only able to find one urgent care that was going to be able to meet our supply. Mm -hmm. um, and then looking at, at price quotes and stuff, it was going to run us about $70 a test. And so when I put the math to it after it was all said and done, we were looking somewhere around 166 to 170000 just to just to get our testing done. And so Jeez. I, actually Facebook helped me out and Union University was doing testing. And so Erica Pitts, who's the athletic trainer there, she came through big for us. I mm -hmm. called Erica and, and kind of seen how they were doing things. She put us on to, you know, doing things through the state and, and how to get waivers and stuff to set up on-site testing. And so we followed recommendations there. And uh, in order to do the testing on campus, you have to set up basically an off-site medical lab. And so gotcha. uh, that involves a CLIA waiver and it goes through the state. And so both of our locations now, we're able to do testing right on site. And so we've got all the waivers and everything all set in place and all the permits. <laughs> and so we started testing at Dyersburg. What that looks like is, you know, like I said, we're twice a week on some sports and then once a week on some sports. Mm -hmm. So we're lucky enough to have a, a location to where, you know, we can do mass testing. So yeah. basically we'll bring the, the kids in mass social distance and everything and uh, come in bring them up one by one testing and then put them back in the location and just wait for their test results um, so the way those tests are run it like i said we're using the bionex now uh, mm -hmm. they're a rapid test and so the kits come with a cartilage a nasal swab and a uh, solution reaction agent 
And so when you go to perform the test, it opens up and uh, you put the reagent in there. Mm -hmm. And then the nasal swab, you're going to do each nostril. It's not like your normal PCRs. So, you know, the other test where you go to the health department, you go to the doctors, they go way up into the nasal cavity. Um, I was going to ask, is it yeah. a brain tickler or is it just like the, no, the just nostril? Just go until you feel like, basically the, the directions say you go until you feel resistance. Gotcha. Right. So, and that's dependent on the person, but it's like half instead half of yeah. the whole. So yeah. it's not, still not comfortable by any means, but it's a lot more comfortable in comparison to the real test. Right. right. You guys are talking, and as the listeners are listening to this, they hear you guys saying we, and what we want to make sure we're understanding, you and I, Will, is that you guys, athletic trainers, are performing the test itself and that you are medically certified to do that. Yes. So I wanted the general public to know that that is a new role, something that has stepped up on you guys that you have taken and embraced because... Most people don't realize athletic trainers can do a lot of things and that you have to be medically certified for a lot of the things you do on the field. Now, this is a new step. Yeah. But you can go ahead and continue with that, but I wanted to make sure people realize that you yourselves are performing this and helping the, the schools and the athletes in a new role. Absolutely. If you, if you had told us at the beginning of all this that when we get about eight months into this that we'd be doing the testing too out of – no way. Um, yeah. I agree. But here we no are. way. No. But here we are. So, right. and it's, you know, yeah, I mean, wh whatever we need to do to make sure our athletes are safe, that's what we're going to do. You know, luckily we, we've come across these tests, which were all donated or given to us by the state for absolutely free. Mm -hmm. So we didn't have real. to pay for any of it. And that's, wow. that's the only way we'd be able to play this spring. Mm -hmm. If we would have had to pay for these, I don't think there's enough money in the budget. I mean, it would have sank the program. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, the test, what, they take 15 minutes? They do take 15 minutes. So basically what will happen, you open up the test, uh, you put six drops of the reagent in there, mm -hmm. and then you do a nasal swab. And the swab goes up basically about an inch is what it's looking like. You go up about an inch to you feel a little resistance, go up against the nasal bone. You get five twists on each side. And then the swab will go into the test. When when you're looking at the test, there's two holes there. The top hole is where the solution goes into, and then you'll put the swab into the bottom hole. And then once the, the swab is in the bottom hole, then you turn that three times clockwise, and then you seal the test. The test is set aside, and when you're looking at the test, it almost kind of reads like a pregnancy test. It has a uh, pink lines, and uh, if you just get one line, then you're good to go and you're mm -hmm. negative. If you get two, then... You know, we're trying to figure out where we need to go from there. So yeah. it is a good thing. And um, right now they're saying it's 97% accurate. So that's good accuracy for us. Oh, yeah, accuracy um, for sure. So, you know, we're bringing our kids in. We're getting them tested. We're, you know, doing temp checks, their mask, and doing their social distancing. And we're doing the questionnaires every day. So I think I, I feel really good about my kids being there and mm -hmm. being able to play their sports and play their games and, you know, get their education, which is very important. And so I think we're taking all precautions we can. Uh, of course, you're always going to, you know, there's going to be some people that, that come up positive. It's going to happen. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but we've been tracing our athletes, everyone that's come up positive. And uh, from the most part, what we're seeing is, you know, they're getting it when they're going home. They're getting it when they're hanging out and, and doing activities elsewhere. Yeah. Um, when we're tracing back, nine times out of ten, you know, it's not – and I'm going to say this, and then here we go, but nine times out of ten, it's not the team-wide spread. You'll get that one person, maybe some roommates, just because they've been, you know, living together. Right. But, uh, we haven't had a single but, case yeah. get contracted while playing, practicing, what have you. Because y'all are using the safety precautions yeah, that y'all have set in place. Yeah, all the safety precautions. Yeah, they're, they're just, I'll echo what Sabrina said. I mean, they're getting it from home mm -hmm. or out in the public. It's not – on the basketball court, the baseball field, the softball field, or soccer field, they're getting it when they're going out in public. So, and that's another thing people don't realize that you're doing the contact tracing yourselves as well. Mm -hmm. right. Not only do, does that information go to the health department if they're positive, but you are also helping trace back yeah. where do they get it to make sure it's not, as you said, on campus and yeah. coming through the basketball team or the softball team. You're making sure they're staying safe. Yeah. No. And I have a list of everyone, like where they live, who lives with them. So if I get a kid that tests positive, I am immediately shut down that apartment. Like they can't come to practice. They can't come on campus until 
that kid comes back negative or, you know, we find out what's going on with him. Mm -hmm. You know, when you run these tests and say you do have a positive on it, we always refer our kids out, you know, to our PCP after that. And if they do run a PCR, sometimes those take 24 hours, 48 hours. You know, they'll be in quarantine until those actual results come in. Right. Those guys will be in isolation, and then uh, their close contacts will be in, in quarantine until that comes back. And, you know, if it comes back negative, then at that point they're released out and everything's good. But, you know, if there's any indication there that they may have the virus or it could have been spread to their roommates and stuff, we just want to contact trace that. And every time we're doing the rapid test, that's another layer that, that adds to it. We're having to report to the state every time we do a test. So we'll do those tests. And like last week alone, I think we did 112 tests. And so all of those have to be reported to the state and uh, and kept up with that way. Right. And, you know, we're keeping up with them also there at the school and, and have templates made out and stuff. So we're having to trace and do stuff yeah. there. So it kind of solidifies that you guys really do care about the well-being of the athletes mm-hmm. more than just on the field. Absolutely. So what is practice like? If you guys have, have y'all started practicing for the different sports, and I guess what does that look like? I know you said you're doing the test. I guess my brain goes to football. Are they doing full contact? I know football is done for this for the season, but Travis and I are both in at the junior colleges, and we don't have football. Right. Um, I have five sports right now, which is men and women's basketball, baseball, softball, and soccer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so soccer, definitely contact. You know, according to how you look at it, they can all be contact sports. Right. But, you know, of course, we're wearing masks when we come in. Uh, if they are on the floor, you know, on the field, they're not wearing masks. But bleachers, dugouts, all that, they will be. Gotcha. And then so we're screening them as when they come in. You know, they got the healthy roster at 7.30 in the morning. That screen has to be there. And then we're also doing the COVID testing. Mm-hmm. You know, weekly too so i think we're taking a lot of precautions and and trying to be as safe as we can with yeah it. for sure so so far you know everything's going well and you know they're able to come in they're able number one to get their education a mm-hmm. lot of our stuff is still online but they are opening up a few classes so they're starting to come on campus now especially with all the testing and stuff yeah and, uh, and then you know still able to play their sports and so we're doing this it's not just jackson and and dyersburg they're doing that conference wide through tennessee and so you know we're working with those guys too and it's it's a big system the way the trainers are putting everything together and so once we test and they have to go play then you know they have to contact back and forth and and give results and, and travel stuff too so it's pretty organized and it would have to be to to be able to do this successfully so that's that's great Now, you mentioned this is in the community colleges. What about high school? I know with being part of our sports medicine team, do you guys know what we're doing? And I know they're taking extra precautions for high schools as well. Do they have access to something similar to this? No, the high schools, they're not doing like a daily or weekly test like we are. I don't think they have access to that, uh, but they are doing daily screens, temp checks, questionnaires. If any of the athletes have temperatures or answer the questionnaire a certain way, they'll be asked to leave and they'll call the parents, talk to the parents, say, hey, so-and-so's got this going on. Probably a good chance, you know, they may be sick, not necessarily COVID, but they need to go get looked at before they're allowed back. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's our role as an athletic trainer. A lot of people don't realize that that trainer, whether it's in the communities, uh, colleges, or high school, that we're doing the temperature checks, we're doing mm-hmm. the screenings. That is one thing we wanted the public to know today, that you guys have stepped up an extra role yeah. uh, with COVID because it's still under the fact that you're taking care of an injured player, but you're mm-hmm. also trying to be preventative as Absolutely. well, and this is also preventative, correct? Yes, very preventative. It prevents an encounter with a healthy athlete. You know, if there wasn't anyone there checking temperatures, the coaches would do it, but some coach, you know, you don't, you never know how thorough or, you know, how much they'll look after it. I'm not saying they wouldn't, but. Well, it kind of falls like underneath normal times of you guys are there to do the quote unquote medical stuff. Mm -hmm. So the coach, their brain isn't necessarily focused on that. They might say, oh, you got a sniffle or a cough. No problem. Come on in. Yeah. And that could be an early sign of COVID, and then boom, the team gets it. You know, so that's what we're there for. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure that stuff doesn't get past the front line, and it gets sent out to get looked at and confirmed that it is or isn't. And 
that way we're not that we're keeping those healthy athletes safe. So with COVID, we have realized that uh, a lot of parents are still wanting their children out on that field mm -hmm. and, and knowing that we've got you guys there to help protect their child and other children from catching the COVID and spreading it throughout the team and the team's not being able to play. That is the reason we're here today to let uh, most general public don't realize the sports can continue mm -hmm. because we, you know, it's a learning process. Wouldn't you guys say it's a daily change for you guys in your role as an athletic trainer that mm -hmm. you're picking up more and more responsibilities of protecting your students, your athletes? Yeah, it's ever changing, ever changing, ever changing weekly. So I've heard there's a, a term called return to play uh, that you guys are kind of utilizing right now. Can you kind of explain to me what that means? So the return to play is, yeah, so if someone tests positive for COVID, you know, when they're ready to come back, however long it takes, you know, some come back after the two weeks, mm -hmm. healthy as a horse, doctor clearance, no problem. It's, I believe, a six-day protocol, maybe seven days. And basically, you're taking them, you're just progressively ramping them up in cardiovascular exercise. Not necessarily, they're going to get tired. They've been out for two weeks. We know that. But we want to see, are they feeling different? Are they having more trouble breathing nor than normal? You know, is their heart, like, is it, you know, beating faster or more regularly than they've ever, you know, than they've noticed before? So we're looking for abnormalities mm -hmm. when, when we, you're progressively ramping them up. Because we know that, like I said, we're gonna, they're going to get tired. But do they feel different? Right. And then we flag that. If, the, if, if they're feeling different, then we need to get them looked at a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. The way we're doing it. You know, in the junior colleges, whenever someone tests positive, you know, we'll send them to the doctor. We'll get that definite diagnosis. We're following CDC guidelines. So for right now, it's 10 days of isolation mm -hmm. at a minimal and then plus 24 hours, no fever and no medications to reduce that fever. Once they've gone through that 10-day period, 24-hour uh, fever reduction and all that, then they'll go back to the doctor. Doctor will determine at that time. And for the junior college, as far as our protocol, it's according if they were asymptomatic during their isolation. Mm -hmm. And so most of the time on the asymptomatics, they're just going to let them return, let them return slowly. But it's not that definite, okay, we got a seven days of things that we have to do. Yeah. Now, the ones that have been symptomatic, you know, we're following a, a tier program on that too. So the doctors have a protocol that they're following according if they've had symptoms, according to what kind of symptoms. I've had some that's been referred on to cardiology, some that's been referred on to pulmonology and had to go in and get further evaluations mm -hmm. and further clearances. I've had some that's been sent to cardiology, some that's been sent to pulmonology for different things. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were still having breathing problems, you know, even after the 10 days or maybe some, you know, heart arrhythmias and stuff that they need checked out. So that's going to be the doctor's recommendation as far as when they can come back and, and the return to play then. Definitely if they have had symptoms, then we're going to put them through the return to play. Mm -hmm. And kind of how that looks is as far as, you know, like parents and coaches, everybody knows the concussion return to play. Right. We've all been through that and we all know that. The COVID one is going to look very, very similar, but uh, we're going to – check pulse ox readings several times. Uh, we're really looking at, you know, their breathing and, and how they're doing and then according to what symptoms they had. You know, are their symptoms popping back up when we're trying to put them out there to play? It starts with low level activity and each day it just ramps up mm -hmm. um, and making sure that they're good when they go back to sport. That's one good thing about having all the certified trainers out there when we're doing the return to play is because we can monitor that. Yeah, Medical professionals that take care of athletes and so you know, we're out there with those kids 24-7, basically, on call all the time. And so we know them, and uh, we can tell when they're acting different, you know. And, and they tell us some things that they don't tell the coaches sometimes. Sure. You know, they try to tough through things and, and different things. And so when they're doing those return to plays and whatnot, we can we can tell, you know, if they're acting normally, if they're breathing harder than what they should be. Like I said, we've we've all got pulse ox meters, and we're checking those throughout the, the return to play each day. Uh, so we have readings on that. And then once we get through those seven days, the seven day is the actual return date. But once we get through that, we refer them back to the doctor. Mm -hmm. The doctor signs off on that. And so, you know, they've seen the doctor now two or three times, plus had a certified trainer on them, you know, monitoring them the whole time. So then, you know, hopefully they're returned and, and healthy as they can be when right. they come back. So that's kind of what it looks like for us. Well, it sounds like to me the Sports Plus athletic trainers are doing exactly what needs to be done to make sure that sports can happen 
people can be safe and people can get back to normal as soon as possible. So thank you guys for doing what you're doing. I appreciate it. I know that your students appreciate it as well and the community as well. So thanks so much for coming in today. And this has been another episode of We Talk Health.